Hello, Micron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match between Vicarin and Shadow 3 I am Shadow 3 your commentator. So, this match is on Desecrated Temple using the Akron EXP mod version 1.2. Vicarin is in the 9 o'clock position, and Shadow 3 is in the 6 o'clock position. Vicarin is going for CISO, and Shadow Fury is going for Grekim. So, both players haven't chosen their race. The popular CISO versus Grekim matchup. And just gonna go over the changes a bit. So EXP 1.2 changed a lot of things. I mean, remember the original EXP changed anti-air range. A lot of tier 1 anti-air units had increased range and tier 3 anti-air units had splash. 1.2 changes that and makes it so that the anti-air units with increased splash, I think, have less splash and the ones with increased range have slightly less range. Seppies, however, have higher ground range, higher speed, and with the weapons upgrade have more damage. Octos have a armor upgrade. It's not in here, not on the tooltips, but they have an armor set up when they have weapons upgraded that gives them well, basically when they get attacked they get armor so they take less damage for repeated attacks though large chunky attacks will still damage them a lot and the biggest change is that the gather rate has been reduced to about 60 percent of the normal gather rate so as you can see every cycle i'm actually getting five resources rather than 10 or five lc or qp rather than 10 and it's happening a bit more frequently about 20 percent more frequently so what, it, what ends up happening is about a 60 percent gather rate compared to vanilla now, we'll see what happens during the game, and remember, just, just to point out, the way Vanilla Akron tends to work out is CISO just goes an expansion spree, Grekim maybe trying to out-expand them, just barely with tried walking or other tricks like that, and CISO just manages to use this expansion spree to turn more expansions, more expansions, get a ton more units, and then if you're lucky, you end up with a Frigate versus Sepi Ligo battle where there's dozens of each unit, and it's just going around the map, and that's all it is, these Frigates and Sepi Ligos trying to mix each other up. Now. Compare that to this game as we watch it, because this is CISO versus Grekim on the map that pretty much showed the CISO expansion creep strategy. So Vikram's playing CISO, he is getting more expansions, but now my Seppi's coming in, this actually was meant to be in, sorry, Shadow Fury Seppi's coming in, it was meant to be an Octo, a bit of a mistype, but still works out as a scouting unit, they're both equally fast now. And Shadow Fury getting a refresh very early on, get three minutes in, getting advanced structures as well, although probably not realizing he doesn't have as much resources as he's used to, only 33 and 10 really should probably do this a bit later. And Vikarin, on the other hand, not really worried too much about this yet, but he is he is still getting harassed. He doesn't have to worry about this. So Vikarin is sending out a special ops to attack me. Sorry, attack Shadow Fury. I, Shadow Fury. And not, not me. This is, this is past me. This is me in the past. The Chronicle one. Anyway, Shadow Fury is sending out a Seppi actually to get a mound up, while at the same time Seppi in the main base is harassing the Marine directly Trying to hit Vikram in the Marines, as he so often recommends, but unfortunately the Seppi does not have enough firepower to actually do this meaningfully. And the second base, the National Expansion, hasn't been expanded too much. Vikram has only gotten four RPs there. So he's sending his Special Ops around. He's scouting clockwise and found, well, nothing in the 12 and 3 o'clock expansions. But he will find Shadow Fury in the 6 o'clock expansion, which is going to be quite difficult for Shadow Fury. He does not have much units to actually deal with this yet. Focusing on expansion of his own, but not much slower than... Vikarin, actually. Vikarin doesn't have much more in the way of expansion, doesn't have much more in the way of resources either. So really, the big thing is that Shadow Fury focused on a reef early on and focused on units other than Octos early on. But this is actually working out pretty well. So there's not as much expansion going on early on in the game. So Vikarin now getting, a, oh, getting QPRPs, getting a couple of QPRPs. Shadow Fury looks like he is, you know, he's aborted the idea of getting early advanced structures, not the idea of getting an early reef, however, and at the 133 mark, we see that Vikran is going for an attack with Special Ops. Shadow Fury, further in the future, is just building up his QPRPs in his main base, building three QPRPs and has 10 LCRPs. So 10 LCRPs at 5 minutes in the game, rather than at, say, 2 minutes in the game, which, of course, means less an expansion explosion. And Mound coming up, which Shadow Fury will be able to see the Vikran's Assault Force coming in further in the future. Vikran, of course, about 3 minutes down from here, has aborted his attack. But he will be, as we just saw, will be further in the future sending out this attack with more units. So back when Shadow Fury is, we see that the Special Ops and Marines are coming about two of each. Are no, three Marines and... No, no, that's two of each. Coming in, Octo's coming in to try to defend, and Shadow Fury trying desperately to defend against this. Not building Octopods, though, which would have been a really good idea, but he did build Octos, and that is... I noticed this armor thing actually is a bit of a bug, but it's a community mod, so it's not quite as well tested as the main game. And... This is... The Octos trying to do what they can, but not doing enough. Special Ops and Marines doing a great job tearing them to shreds. 
and Shadow Fury actually jumping back to see when the attack originally happened. Vigoran about a minute up from here. As far as you can tell, his special ops, which he sent back, he's no longer echoing it out, is attacking the reef, has destroyed the Arctic, is going through the reef. And this is when that third LCR, or the ninth LCRP came in. Seppi trying to defend as against the special ops and doing an okay job with reef support, but not a great job. The special ops is it's only taking two damage per shot, so very little damage. However, the Seppi is. Shadow Fury has decided to send the Seppi around to scout towards Vikran's natural expansion rather than Vikran's main base. And Vikran is building up his importers. Well, third importer, which he saw before. And he used the units we saw before to attack Shadow Fury's base. So Vikran is now building up some more QPRPs. But as you can see, the RP explosion really doesn't happen. I mean, the amount of resources that Vikran has does not support it if he wants to have any sort of military. If he doesn't have any sort of military, Shadow Fury could just go in, build up a ton of military units, and just tear him to shreds. Like octopods, in particular octopods. So it's just important to note that there's a lot more ground play right now, and a lot more low-level play. I mean, the factory hasn't been built yet either. Neither has I mean, advanced structures like Shadow Fury got originally, but couldn't really use that. And it looks like Vikran actually is going for a little bit of a wall-in strategy. I mean, wow. I mean, yeah, the, the growth rate of our piece is a bit more like StarCraft's rate, and I mean, the Desecrated Temple was kind of based off or very similar to Lost Temple from StarCraft, but wow, talk about StarCraft when you talk about Wallens for the human race. So, anyway, Vikran has been scouted, his north base, sorry, his natural expansion has been scouted up by Shadow Fury, and Shadow Fury, about 30 seconds into the future, does have actually another triad built up, but mostly for defense, not for building up more units, just keeping it there to have a variety of units to defend against the infantry push, and the infantry push actually isn't happening. So now Shadow Fury is sending out his units a bit further, just figure out nothing's going on, try to do the same thing to attack, actually. And the Seppi being destroyed, scouting Seppi being destroyed by the Special Ops and Marines. However, that does mean that the attack has been delayed a bit. So every every time this happens, Shadow Fury just gets a bit more time to build up forces, even though he should be building Octopods and isn't. And Vikran... Vikran is getting his, still getting his wall and he is getting his infantry actually going straight towards Shadow Fury's natural rather than Shadow Fury's main this time around. So Shadow Fury defending this corner of the main is not going to be quite as effective as it would have been. And Vikran now closing off the wall in. And apparently when I was talking to him afterwards, Vikran actually left one tile of space at the sides, which is very clever, making sure that he had enough room for Marines and Special Ops to get out in and out without worrying about Grekin units getting in and out. Very, very, very clever. And it looks like... No, he is in fact changing around his strategy again to go for this base, but Shadow Fury will be seeing the attack that was coming in for the main base, and that attack, actually, maybe not. That attack isn't really coming in. However, Seppi and Faro are going towards the 3 o'clock expansion for Shadow Fury. Shadow Fury just building up, trying to get an expansion, though this is really risky. Very hard to say if it'll pay off. I I don't know if it will or not, but it's it really depends on whether or not Vikran attacks, and Vikran, of course, like I said, is attacking at least one place. He is going towards... Here, like I said, he did leave just enough space. Attacking towards... Actually, towards the natural expansion, not towards the main base, queuing up a couple of orders to attack this natural expansion. And, of course, he does have a factory as well, so we can start building units from the factory and two extra armories. And, honestly, I, when I saw this when I was playing the game, this made, just made me laugh out loud. Seeing a StarCraft-style wall in like that, it was just brilliant. I mean, it would have been more... It would have been more... Like StarCraft if it was two importers and an armory, but... Two, two armies in a factory is much more effective for CSO and about the same cost. Anyway, units coming in with HHC support as well, and two more Marines coming in. Or sorry, two more Special Ops now, but these are Marines. Another HHC and then Mech and Lancer coming in, so Vikran really setting up this assault, and Shadow Free now having enough money to build. Well, when Vikran was, he had enough money to build advanced structures, he has it now, he has a Spire, but he does He now again is getting Octopods, but does not have Pharopods, or Sepipods, rather interesting. And here, the Octopod coming in to attack the ATC with the Faro support will be to destroy the ATC, but the rest of the infantry units are coming in. Looks like they were... No, they were just going through the queued orders. A little bit out of the way, and Shadow Fury does not have the forces needed to fend off all this infantry. He does have the Octopods, but it's not going to be enough. He also doesn't have enough QP to really support area units right now. He really should have gotten more QP RPs before building up the Spire. Because the air right now is actually very expensive. It's as it's supposed to be expensive and risky, but really useful for mobility. Anyway, Lancer coming in for Vikarin, and I believe he did have Tornado built as well. So I might be wrong. He does have a Lancer coming in. Oh no, I ain't. I'm. No, he does just have a Lancer. He does have. He has machinery and ground units, however, but. 
He does not have anything beyond... The Grand Union is just more for Marines, really, at this point. Marines have now a great attack. Vickering coming in from the natural expansion through to Shadow Fury's main base. More salt coming in, and Shadow Fury has not actually used this expansion yet, not progenerated properly in this expansion yet. While Faro's coming in, trying to help defend, but not really doing too much. And, yeah, Vickering pointing out that Shadow Fury did not build any Octopods, which was a bit concerning, but because the Octopods are effective against infantry, totally forgot to build them. Kind of silly. But anyway, yeah, and this spire was a bit of a waste too, but it's now in the unplayable pass, so there's no real way to get rid of that or stop that from having actually cost me any money. Or, sorry, stop that for Shadow Fury cost me any money. And that is... Well, that's a bit of a shame, because like I said, it's not really that useful yet. And here we go. Shadow Fury's last stand, trying to get a bunch of boxers in here. Destroying actually quite a bit of Vikran's forces, but Vikran's forces is just taking way too much damage. And... From Shadow Fury's point of view, in Shadow Fury's point of view, does not actually win this battle. But from Vikram's point of view, see the actual battle going on. The Archer's coming in and actually destroying about half the infantry, but Vikram's just jumping back, jumping back. I guess trying to re micro figure out what's going on. He does have a couple specialists coming in towards this Arcticus, damaging it quite heavily, and a Macrofab being proxied next to Shadow Fury's base, but is actually destroying all the infantry. Unfortunately, they are getting destroyed by the Lancers and ATHDs quite handily. Faro's doing what they can, but it's not enough. The Marines able to just deal enough damage before it dies, for the rest of the units to just finish everything off. A Noctopod coming in, however, for Shadow Fury, and Shadow Fury now jumping back to the beginning of this attack, trying to re-micro, re-macro it, but not really able to do much, and he isn't, he is progening the Sepi pod, or the Sepi, not the Faro, the Faro has not been progened yet. A Noctopod has been born, it is coming in, to help defend, destroys the Lancer, but won't be able to, be able to do too much. These ATCs, of course, are cloaked, and cloaked units cannot be detected by Units that are not detectors, like Octopods. Faros do help, but the Faro is being stranded by the Special Ops flank. And a Mech coming in. Of course, a Mac Fab here as well, which will be very powerful once it gets built up. And here we are. The so Shadow Fury actually now using this expansion, building up more units, trying to use it as a way of saving himself because his main base has been pretty much overrun. Defense Dirt coming in as well, so. Wow, actually building a Defense Dirt. Vikram is building a Defense Dirt inside. Inside Shadow Fury's base, and he could upgrade it if he wants to, because he has. Well, that's just insane. So he, he Vikran has destroyed Shadow Fury's main triad and his natural expansion, getting a lot of LC though. And Shadow Fury still has the resources because Vikran went for the unit production first, not the resources. And because of that, Shadow Fury can actually rebuild a bit. But it's gonna be very risky for Shadow Fury to try to get out of this. However, Vikran is managing to get a lot of resources, and Shadow Fury is complete. I mean, Vikran actually has a lot of resources now. But of course, Vikran also he is expanding a bit more. He has a few more RPs. But not a whole lot more RPs. I mean, he's got like five or six more RPs. This is 11 minutes in the game. This is about the time when that makes sense. And this attack, though, like I said, also Vikran is winning. Vikran can't really worry about harassment because Vikran's winning. Like he just, he can just build RPs as he wants because there's really not much to worry about in terms of harassment. At this point, it's just sealing the deal. The only reason that Shadowfire even has a chance right now is because he sent out this Octo, oh, sorry, the Sepian Faro to expand, which. Has been somewhat useful, but not really useful enough. Shadow Fury has hardly any resources left. Though, Vikran has not actually gone and dealt a lot of damage to the RPs yet. Focusing a bit more on production capacity, focusing a bit more on the reef, on tech. Not really worried about resources yet, but doesn't really matter. Shadow Fury has really no way of saving this base. And it's Magnavab coming in here, and more Martanks coming in. One of the Martanks has actually come into the main base already for Vikran, dealing a ton of damage with it, and managing to just. I'd be able to finish off that base easily. But this 3 o'clock base here for Shadow Fury, that's about his only hope right now. As an Octo as well, probably will build a Faro to build a Spire from here and maybe build some air units. While Shadow Fury, actually Shadow Fury at this point in time also notices the Macrofab and starts attacking it. But these units are in jeopardy. There's, they do not exist actually. The triad that he was used to produce them was destroyed before they ever came into existence. So these guys were never born. I mean, these guys think they exist now, but no, they've never been born. They, they never will have been born. And the triad that birthed them has been destroyed about two minutes before they dealt any real damage. So this red time wave, as you can see, is destroying any of the damage that was dealt as Vikran comes in and completely tears apart that base. And now Vikran, of course, is probably suspecting something. He has put up a base, or sorry, put up a Q order into the natural expansion of the 3 o'clock base. But of course, Shadow Fury is in the main of the base, not in the, rather than the natural expansion. Though Octos are being sent towards the natural expansion to build more RPs. So this is still going to be a bit big. Vikarin 
as... Sorry, Shadowfear also starting to attack the wall, but no use. That, that's when I found it and laughed my head off, because really, it's kind of funny. I mean, I never expected to see this in Akron, ever. I mean, okay, when I very first started building maps, because I was more, I was a StarCraft player first before Akron, I kind of expected it, but no, I haven't expected it for years. It's hilarious to see that actually happen. Of course, the unit's coming in, destroying these RPs, buying actually Shadowfear a lot of time, because he has quite a bit of, he has a lot of LC and QP now, could use it to build well, a lot of base class units, and also build up Spire, build up... And from there, build up air units, build some far pods, use them to destroy... Destroy the Mar tanks, destroy the ATHCs. And Tornod actually has destroyed that mound, but really it doesn't matter. That mound had done its job pointing out the infantry attack when it first came in. And Vikran, of course, is still building up. He is getting more of his bases around the map, getting a couple more bases. Not a whole lot, though, like I said, he really isn't expanding as wildly as you would in Vanilla. More focused on building military and just finishing off the game, because really he is finishing off the game right now. Well, Shadow Fury, of course, just trying to stay in, get a bit of a comeback. Has a far pot actually at this point in time, about 30 seconds in, up. But the Mar Tanks coming in, found that expansion, found the RPs here. It's probably a bad idea to build them here. Probably would have been better to build them up here, although then yeah, that wouldn't have helped either since there are RPs here. Possibly building them here, maybe? Might have been a good idea. Anyway, Shadow Fury has been found out for the most part. Looks like he's trying to send his farpot around to trick Vicarin, the thing that it came from his main base somehow, or didn't come from the natural from the three o'clock expansion. Also, make sure his octo doesn't go for us so that Vicarin does not realize that an octo would have been there. But an ATC coming up here anyway. Vicarin has found it at this point in time. He has found it with the Tornad, and it's going to deal meaningful damage to it. So Shadow Fury really can't do too much. Vicarin has found the base and destroyed it. Shadow Fury thought he had a chance, but he did not. There is no way out of this. Vicarin has. Vikran has taken this game, but still, it was a much it was a closer fought game than most Caesar vs. Grecum games are, and Shadow Fury GG's. Much closer fought game than most CVGs are, and a lot more fun to watch, because really, and well, it was fun to play too, because really, it wasn't feeling like Caesar was just gonna explode across the map and there was nothing Grecum could do about it. I mean, remember, this is probably the worst map for CISO mass expansion. And I know you can see a lot of RPs now, but remember, this is end game. This is Vikran had a ton of time where he had no pressure at all and could just build up, build up, build up no real counter pressure and of course there wouldn't be because he was winning quite handily and also 17 minutes in the game this isn't saying much so really this is quite effective as a way of setting up there's i mean it wasn't a steamroll yeah vikran won but shadow fury made i made a ton of mistakes when i was playing i didn't build octopods i focused too much on areas i was trying to play like vanilla too much i mean that that was a much better setup than the vanilla CVG matchup has been, especially on this map, which, like I said, was the catalyst for the CISO Mass Expand strategy becoming a big thing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.